Hi everyone, my name is Trisha with the Sampling Hillsborough County Public Library System. We're back again for another live Reader's Advisory session. Uh, this week my colleague Allie is joining me. Hello. So we will give you uh, Facebook recommendations for if you're in a reading slump or if you just want a book that's a lot like the last one you finished and just loved. Um, just tell us in the comments below what you're reading or what you're looking for and we'll be happy to give you some advice and uh, hopefully help you find your next great read. Uh, so September is National Library Card Sign Up Month. So if you haven't got your library card yet, definitely want to do that. Um, it's free. If you live in uh, Hillsborough County, just go to any of your local libraries. It takes about two minutes. You're in the door, out, got your library card, you're good to go. Uh, and we're also celebrating the freedom to read. So you see our lovely sign behind us. Um, so yep, tell us in the comments what you're reading and uh, we'll give you some recommendations. So what are you reading right now, Allie? I'm currently reading Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. And it's a really great book. Um, it's kind of a uh, inspirational, self-help um, type of a book. It's not something that I would normally read, but I was recommended it by um, a colleague. And so I said, oh, I'll give that a try. It is a nonfiction book. And um, it's just really interesting reading it because she starts off with each chapter talking about um, a lie that we've told ourselves before and then how we can overcome that lie to basically become the you that you want to become the better version of you and um, it's just really greatly it's it's really um, very witty the way that it's written um, it sounds it's kind of an informal like just your friend is talking to you giving you life advice it's just very relatable the stories that she shares um, the author, Rachel Hollis, she's a mother of four, so I can relate to that, having multiple kids myself. Um, and she works for um, a lifestyle uh, website, and she's the CEO of her own media company. So, you know, it's a working mom balancing um, working life with home life, um, just, you know, getting through every day, making every moment count. And um, it has, it's been very inspirational, uh, entertaining. It's been uh, helping me with personal growth so it's definitely a book that I would recommend to anyone well that's awesome so once you finish reading it then you can tell me how I can then be the me that I want to be yes. yes is what is what you're saying yes and I even love the, the title of it girl wash your face because I mean there's symbolism right there it's you know washing away like what you want to change about yourself the negativity and you know starting with a clean slate and so i just every time i say it i want to say like girl just wash your face pick yourself up and you know the next day it'll be better and so it's it's been a really great read well that sounds awesome uh, i can add it to my list uh speaking of you do have uh, multiple kids yes. um so have you been reading any really good children's books lately pictured books anything that you would recommend in that front oh yes Yes, every week I check out different books for all of my kids. Um, my son is two years old and my twin daughters are nine months. So they're kind of differing ages um, that we're reading to. You know, the little ones aren't quite um, comprehending all of the words, but it's so important to be reading to your infants um, and to your preschool children. So I did bring a couple books that we've been reading actually this past week that I was gonna return to the library that I just wanted to talk about that I've really enjoyed. The first one is called Neon Leon. Let me see if I can set it up. Can you see it? Okay, Neon Leon, and it is by Jane Clark. And this is a really great book. It's about a little chameleon named Leon, and he's very sad because he doesn't fit in with the other chameleons. Now everyone knows chameleons can change their color, right? Depending right. on what they're touching, they can change their color. But poor little Leon can't do that. He is a bright orange color, so he's sticking out. Um, and he's not fitting in with his friends. So throughout the book, he's trying to find a group that he fits in with. And it's a really great book because it teaches kids about empathy and the pictures in it are just, they're really bright pictures. I have a couple pages bookmarked that I really liked because I thought it was fun as I was going through. So like this is one page you can see, see where's Leon? Oh, he's right there. He's the bright orange one. <clears throat> So you can see he doesn't fit in, but what's really fun about it is that it's a very interactive book. That um, on this page it's saying, good night, Leon, and it wants you to turn the page softly so we can practice, you know, using our quiet indoor voice um, with the kids when we're reading it. And then on this one page, Leon sees something that's orange over here, so he's gonna go, but 
um, over to the orange spot, but you know, Leon, Leon walks very slowly. So we're gonna help him with counting. So not only are we working on counting and recognizing different colors in this book, but the kids get to participate in as well. So, you know, it's exciting when your toddler is able to count up to 10, you know, one, two, three, four, five. You can vary if you're talking really fast or counting slower. So Neon Leon is a current book that we're reading that I recommend. It's been a great one. Very nice. And we actually have a couple of comments that are popping okay. up on Facebook. Um, so we've got two. One is any suggestions for good thrillers? Mm -hmm. So we'll be thinking about that one because the other okay. question is very easy um, and it is do I have to renew my library card every year? Uh, which the answer is no, it's every three years. Um, so your library card is good for three years and then you just have to come back in and verify your ID, or sorry, your address. So as long as your address has not changed, um, you're good. Um, and if, even if it has, we just update your address and you're still good. Um, you don't have to get a new library card or anything like that. So let's come back to good thrillers. What do you think? Anything that jumps out at the top of your head? the top of my head I'm trying to think um, hmm, I don't know what's a good thriller that you've read recently let me look at the title because I actually did um, let's see just read one but I can't remember the title of course I know sometimes there's so many that the titles will run together or the authors have you ever mixed the, the titles together oh yeah I think you make it a little bit harder for yourself to try to find that or particular you book. swish up the author with the book and then you're mm -hmm. like, oh, it's, you know, um, Sean Connolly. <laughs> yes. And they're like, that, no, that's not That right. doesn't sound <laughs> correct. No, that's not how I recall. Thrillers are interesting too because it, it is another one of the genres that I don't typically read myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I get a lot of recommendations from what other people tell me and then they're, I'm like, oh, well, you know. Um, was somebody... Actually, one of my coworkers just told me she just finished The Girl in the Window. Um, is that going to be a movie soon? Or is it already a movie? I get that mixed up with The, the Girl on the, the train. train. Yeah, as soon as you said that, I was that's the one that I was going to. But yes, yeah, so um, The Girl in the Window or The Girl on the Train, if you haven't seen the movie yet. I always like to watch the book first before I watch the movie. Uh, but that's just me. You like you like to do the reverse and well, I just feel like the books are just always so much better than the movies So for me if I read the book first and then I go into it watching the movie I go in it with really high expectations And then I'm that person in the theater next to my husband or whoever I'm seeing the movie with saying Well, that's not how it is in the book. Well, they give you more of the backstory in the book. So I don't want to be that person ruining it for everyone else. So I like to watch the movie first, kind of a lower expectation, and then read the book. Okay, well, my response to that in general is, you know, just don't say that, maybe. <laughs> just don't say it in the movie. Um, well, it's just hard to hold it in. I w okay, you know what, I will say as far as thrillers go, one of my all-time favorite authors for this genre is Patricia Highsmith. Um, she did Strangers on a Train, and she also did uh, The Talents of Mr. Ripley, which I'm a fan of both of those. Yeah, I, I think I've probably read all one. of her books. Um, so I'm a huge fan of hers. Um, and then, let's see, what else do we have? The Girl on the Train again, coming up. Oh, I will tell you one that I've heard really good things about is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy um, by John LeCar. And uh, I haven't read it, I have to be honest, but I've heard such good things about it, so it's definitely on my to-be-read list. Mm -hmm. um, I just haven't got around to it yet. And one that I've read before is called The Historian, and let me see who the, uh, the author is. check back and see if we have any more comments coming oh, up. I don't know. I think we did. It's kicking me out every time I try typing in it. Hmm. Okay. Right, I'm going to rely on our producer to make sure I'm not missing any comments that are coming up. Because uh, 
you know, technology doesn't always want to cooperate with me. No, you, you repel technology. No, that's you. <clears throat> I just occasionally have a problem. <clears throat> You're looking for the historian, you said? Yeah, it, it just, it kept... Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Kostova? Kostova. Yeah, actually, this would be a good one to, um, to recommend coming up soon since, you know, next month is Halloween because it ties into um, the myth of Dracula, about that whole story and subplot. Um, this is someone, it's a girl who has, um, I want to say she receives like a mysterious medieval book um, that has a bunch of letters in it and it's about her family's history and how it ties into um, Dracula and that legacy. Um, so it is, it's a mystery, it's a thriller, there's pieces of history thrown in there. Um, if you're a Dan Brown fan and you like um, um, kind of that genre, then I definitely think that people, I would recommend this to anyone to read it. Um, I mean, it kept my attention throughout it. It was really good. Well, that's difficult to do with three children, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, and we did have another comment that came up for Thriller. Uh, Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter was an amazing psychological thriller. Um, Let Me Lie also really well. I don't know if that's also Karen Slaughter. Because um, our comment doesn't stay on that. But So two more, Pretty Girls and Let Me Lie uh, for really good thrillers. Oh, and I was, I was coming back to what you were talking about with the historian, which is kind of completely different, but it sparked it in my memory. Uh, talking about Dracula. This is also the 200th anniversary of Frankenstein, right? With Mary Shelley? Yes, yes it um, is. This year? Was it October or September that she published that or am I just making that up because it's near Halloween? I could be making that up. I was going to say, I know that there is the, um, the publication anniversary and then I think also um, either her birthday or when she passed. I think people are tying into that. But yes, yeah, it so is the 200th anniversary of it. So I think this is a, a good chance for people to either reread it or maybe read it for the first time if you hadn't read it before. Because I mean, there's a lot of different themes in that book that it was, was you know, very groundbreaking at the time when, when she wrote it. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and even just a lot of um, sort of misinterpretations that come around that because, you know, mm -hmm. everybody thinks Frankenstein's the monster. But it's right? not. Uh, spoiler <laughs> no alert. No spoiler alerts today. Um, you, you figured that out pretty early on, but um, so it, so that's definitely a classic that I would recommend uh, just any time in the 200th anniversary. Uh, my book club is actually doing Washington Irving's uh, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow oh, for right. October, uh, so I'm going to be listening to that audio book coming up. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, it's always nice when you're reading on theme mm -hmm. um, for Halloween, which, and coming back to reading to your kids, I feel like this would be a nice thing as well for, like, nine month olds you said they don't really know what's going on so you could really read anything you could read you know <laughs> Tolstoy out loud to them and they don't know and you're just adding in your reading collection so that's got to be kind of nice you know you're not ever just tempted <laughs> to just you know oh let me just read this whatever I want to read just read out yeah. loud to them well I mean you really could do that because with reading to infants it's it's the vocabulary exposing them to the different words that you're not necessarily using every day in your your and everyday hearing language. you talk, yes, because that helps them develop mm -hmm. their language skills. So yeah, we always recommend that to parents that you know, say you don't want to read a children's book. You know, you can read um, a magazine, you can read the TV guide, you could read the newspaper. Just reading out loud so your children can hear you. It's just really what you don't you don't read the TV guide. Uh, I, Is that where they still, do they still make a TV guide? I haven't seen one in yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. I guess you just. So, so you have the TV guide at your house? No, not at my house. Yeah, I don't know that they do a print copy of the TV guide. I'm pretty sure they do. Maybe we'll have to All research right, we'll, that later. Yeah, we'll come back to that. We'll, that Sidebar will be for a, now. Come back mm -hmm. to um, if they still make a print TV guide. But yes, I, I mean, I think I, I don't have they kids, but if I like did, I would ago. read something a little bit more interesting than the TV guide. But I see where you're going, the newspaper, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, sports magazines, whatever you want to do. I, I, I at least see where you're going with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, it's interesting with um, Girl, Wash Your Face. I've actually really been into sort of, um, not necessarily, I guess you would say memoir more mm -hmm. than anything else by female authors. Um, and I've got a lot that are on my list, like No, You Can't Touch My Hair, 
Um, well, that escalated quickly for two of the ones, and of course I can't think of the authors on either one of those, um, but I've just started and they're really, really good. Um, and so that's kind of what my genre right now that I'm into is this right. female memoir, um, <clears throat> you know, perk if it's a comedy. As you know, last week I talked about Jenny Lawson and mm -hmm. how obsessed I am with her, which I still am. I, I can't recommend, let's pretend this never happened enough. Um, and it, I did enjoy this. So Jenny Lawson grew up in Texas, as you know, I'm from Alabama, uh, so I feel like there are sort of a lot of similarities with small town, growing up in a small town, Very and people saying, oh, wait, where is that? Um, you know, where's your town? Mm -hmm. But I actually did talk to a coworker who's from Connecticut last week and said she also very well enjoyed it. So a large town from Connecticut mm -hmm. still uh, is enjoying it, so it wasn't just my personal background. But yes, let's pretend this never happened, absolutely. Uh, I would recommend that. Well, I was going to say, when you said that you're reading, you know, different memoirs um, uh, written by, by females, I've kind of gone down that path, too, a little bit with um, comedians writing memoirs. Um, the Mindy Kaling, she has two books out that I've read hers, and uh, as a bonus, they usually the comedians will also um, narrate it on the audiobook, and so I enjoy, you know, listening to them as well. Sometimes they even have their friends come in and do, like, guest spots, I guess, like, on the audiobook, so it's fun to hear that. But uh, Mindy Kaling has the book, Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me? And Other Concerns is the full title of it. And that's a really fun one. Um, Tina Fey, Amy Poehler. Um, these women are, are just funny, you know, on screen and off screen. They're writers, they're mothers, they're working women. And they're just so funny and relatable that I enjoy reading their memoirs and, and hearing what they have to say. And she has a second book as well, Mindy Kaling, right? Um, yeah, she has two out right Because I think Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me is the first one, um, which is pretty impressive that she's doing her TV show and still has time to write two books. Kind of makes me wonder what I'm doing with my free time, but you know. <laughs> what are you doing, Trisha? Not writing two best-selling books, I'll tell you that. I keep trying to read Bossy Pants by Tina Fey, but it, I'm, I feel like I'm eternally on hold for it. No matter when I go to check it out, there's always a hold. Now granted, that's because I'm trying to get the audiobook, because I feel like that's going to really add something extra, um, mm -hmm. but I always feel like there are 20 people in line ahead of me, so I still haven't listened to it yet. Um, but You Can't Touch My Hair and Other Things I Still Have to Explain is by Phoebe Robinson. So I'm going back to look up the two that I mentioned just to make sure I have the authors correct. Um, and she has a new book that's either coming out or has already come out. So she will have two as well. Um, well, you know, and sometimes that's how you know it's a good book. If other people are waiting for it, then... I know, but I'm so impatient. When I want to listen to it, I want to listen to it right then. I'm, it's, I'm similar like that with, um, with series. I don't like starting a book if the series isn't you want really everything finished out. Yeah. or if it's very close to, to wrapping up. So by the time I get to that last book, the fourth or fifth book, whatever it is, I can just go ahead and pick it up. I don't like having to wait a year in between you know, the first and second books. Well, that being said, I still, if it's an author that I love or someone's recommended the book to me, I'll still go ahead and read it. But I hate having to wait. I'm too impatient. Well, and I have to go back and reread whatever I read the first time because then I can't remember it when the next book comes out and I'm all confused. Um, so I like to wait for that. Oh, it's as well. so funny you say that. I just checked out a book from the library yesterday because I, I was reading the, the synopsis of it and I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. It's something that I might like. Take it home, start reading it. I'm like, this sounds very familiar. You've and read as it I'm already. going through it, I'm like, oh, I've already read this. It's the first one in the series, and now it's like, oh, I need to get the second one. But it's because I had to wait so long until the second one came out. And I said, oh, well, I'll take it back for someone else to pick it up, you know. I've done that before, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, well that, es well, that escalated quickly, Memoirs and Mistakes of an Accidental Activist is uh, Francesca Ramsey. Um, she was a blogger and I think she did um, like an MTV, she had something with MTV um, and I do think this is her first book but um, I'm just getting started but I'm really excited. Oh yeah, MTV's Decoded. I actually don't know what that is. But As a, is that a show? Sure. That sounds wonderful. I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm a little past the MTV generation now so I'm too old. I know it's sad. Me too, me too. But You're just saying that to make me feel better. <laughs> um, so I know that you also like to really read a lot of YA. Mm -hmm. um, have you had any really good YA books that you've read recently that you'd recommend? Oh, oh, let me guess. <laughs> I already know what, what it's going to say. I don't know if you've read it recently, but... 
Um, just by talk, I don't read YA fantasy. It's not my personal genre, but just by talking to Allie, I am confident that I can always make a, res a, a recommendation for anybody yes. who likes YA fantasy because the answer is always Sarah J. Mass. Yes. I cannot think of how many times Ellie has told me that. Sarah J. Mass. Read Sarah J. Mass. Um, so and that's the I, author's name. I, yes. I'm, yes. So okay. any, just any, to clarify. Anything other than Sarah J. Mass that you've read recently that you would recommend that's YA? Well, I was going to say Sarah J. Mass does have a book that's coming out. Um, See, you can't help yourself. In October. <laughs> she has a book coming out in October. Not that, you know, I'm in just, you know... You're waiting you for are ahead on hold, don't you? But um, I possibly, I could quite possibly be at the top of the holds list because I want to read it right away, and I might have to do a refresher of some of the other books in between. But um, so Sarah J. Mass has a book coming out. Um, also, one of my other favorite YA authors is uh, Melissa Mar. Mar. No, Melissa Mar. Mm. Are you familiar with her? I'm not. Okay, she wrote the Wicked, Wickedly Lovely series. And Wait, then, did she write Cinder? No, that okay. is Marissa Meyer. Oh, see, I'm mixing up a lot of M's. Again. A lot of M's. Yes, which Cinder actually is another fantastic series that I've read all of them, even the um, I guess kind of like the prequel for it. Um, but that's another one I'd love to talk about sometime because Cinder is a great series. It's kind of a um, just in general, you hope somebody comes up to you in the supermarket and says, let's talk about Cinder. Oh, no. I, I always talk about it with, with customers that come up to me asking about different book recommendations. Cause you should a have really a YA one. fantasy book club. And you can be like, we're reading this. We're reading this. No, I don't want to impose it on other people. I just oh, want you to you share my knowledge with them. But yes, when people have, you know, it makes me so happy when people come up to me afterwards telling me, oh, I read this book that you recommended. It was really great. Can I get the next one in the series? And I'm like, yes, let's go to the shop and get it. Or you have to break their heart and say, it's not out yet. I know. But it's coming yes. out next year. And then you start the whole process all over again. Mm -hmm. I know. It's, it's sad. Um, oh, but the other one um, that I was going to say that is coming out soon is um, not Melissa Marr. That is another excellent author that I like. But uh, Cassandra Clare. Okay. She has a book that's coming out. It's not until December, so it's the end of the year. But, you know, it's right around the holidays. I'm sure it would make a wonderful present for someone if they are a Cassandra Clare fan. Um, she has a bunch, um, such as myself. Uh, are, you, are you, like, <laughs> giving present tips? I'm just making sure all my family and friends are watching this, just in case they're wondering what to get me this year. You're getting 15 <laughs> copies of that book. Everybody you know is giving you that book now. Um, Cassandra Clare, she's the author of the um, Immortal Instrument series. Um, I'm not sure if you've read that. They made it into a movie. They made it into a TV show. The books are always, I think, are always better than, than the, the movie crossovers. But, um, but she has that series. She has um, the, the new series is kind of, the, I guess I would say a spinoff from that one, but it takes place uh, more recently. But you have some characters that you um, know and love from the other series that kind of cross over. So you get to kind of follow up with them to see how, how um, you know, they've um, progressed and, and changed. I really like it when an author does that, when it's not exactly the same series, or even a series, but if they just write a book that includes some of the characters from, you know, from a previous book. So you just kind of get to check in and see what they're doing. Because uh, right. I always wonder that. I'm like, well, what happens now? Or, oh, you end on a positive note or, you know, mm -hmm. life-changing thing, romantic ending. And, and then you're like, what happens now? So it's nice when they check in on them. And, you know, well, you can kind of see what's coming And sometimes, up. too, with the world building that they do, you know, they create their own universe. So it's... They have their one storyline that might be one book, like you say, or it could be a whole series, but then they're able to kind of cross over and transition to another series, but you're still within that um, world that they built, and so you still have all the same kind of rules and everything that's going, but then you get to explore another aspect mm -hmm. of it, so I think that's really fun. Um, I always enjoy that as well. And we did get another comment for thriller recommendations. Mm -hmm. Um, the Ruin by Dervla McTiernan. I may have mispronounced the name, but hopefully I did not. Um, that is also a very good thriller and kept you guessing until the very end. I don't know if I could read that because it may irritate me that I couldn't figure out the ending. Um, have you ever done that where you skip to the end? Oh, yeah, constantly. and read the book. Like I was going to say, I do that all the time. I'm definitely one of those people that, that does that because. Oh yeah, I have a hard time even not skipping ahead to, on the page when I know something big's about to happen. I have to try and stop myself and, and slow down because I'm like, you know, 
So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I you just want to get there. You want to. I kinda... definitely want to flip to the end, and it always makes me think oh. when Harry met Sally when I do that. Uh, but I feel like I just do it more out of curiosity than anything else. But because you know, in What's... the movie he said he flipped. Yeah, never mind. It's fine. <laughs> <We know. laughs> no, but yeah, because I'm always guessing. I'm like, oh, I think this is the person that did it. You know, I think this is what's happening, and so I want to skip to the end to see if I'm right. And sometimes I am right, and sometimes I'm not right. And it's like, well. Well, let me continue reading to see where we took a U-turn and we went somewhere else in the storyline because I did not think that's where we were going with I did it. not see that coming. Yep. Um, but, yeah, that's good. That, and I think that's one of the reasons I don't read a lot of thrillers because I just want to jump to the back and figure out what's happening. I have a hard time with movies, too. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to watch a movie that's a thriller and they want me to just... See, I'm impatient. It's coming back to that. It is, it is. I, I understand that it is an issue with me. I'm working on it. How are you with um, reading a book and you're just not into it? Will you close it, put it aside, or are you one of those diehards that you started a book and you're just going to see it through to the end? This is an interesting question. (laughs) My typical MO is that if I start it, I have to finish it. Okay. But I have been getting away from that a little bit, um, especially if I feel like it's just a book that I'm not in the space to read at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a very specific example of this, and it was Train Spotting. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever read that, or but it's written in you know the Scottish or Irish dialect, whatever country it takes place in. It, it's been a while since I've read I it, think but it's Scottish. But continue. Yes, but it, so it's written in that dialect, very mm-hmm. um, you know how they would actually talk. So it was very hard for me to read it first. Um, and I did just have to put it down, and then I waited until I was on vacation, and I had much more time, and mm-hmm. then figured out that the author put a glossary in the back, which was a lot of help. Oh, it took uh, you a while to figure that out, though? Well, I didn't, I just didn't, but, like, I was flipping through it again, and I was like, oh, I should That's really why you have this. to flip to the back. I you know. never know what's going to be back there. But I finally was like, oh, okay, I just, I need to pick this back up and try again, which, and mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it once I did, and, you know, about a fourth of the way through, I could actually hear it in my head for how they were talking. Um, It just took me a while to get to that point. So I will say that as I've gotten older and I feel like wiser, Mm -hmm. I will maybe put a book down and try and come back to it. Uh, Or if I've read something that's really heavy, um, like I read Beartown recently by um, the Swedish author whose name I'm going to mispronounce, Ove. No, that was his other book, um, Frederick Bachman. Um, So I read Beartown. It is really, really good. I recommend that everyone read it, but it's very heavy. Um, so afterwards, I was like, you know what, I really, really need a nice, um, you know, a nice comedy to follow that up with, because uh, I can't little, do two heavy books lighter. right there, right there in a row. Um, and we have another question. We have recommendations for a good mystery book. Ooh. Ooh, that's very mystery. Go with the first thing that comes to the top of your head. I know I put you on the spot. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works that way. Um, good mysteries. Let me think about that. We have one minute. Why? Why are you trying to put a timer on me? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just put a little pressure on you. There's, there's pressure on you too. No, I don't feel any pressure. Oh, I'm so glad. Um, let's see. I think of the best ones that I've read recently. Um, Tanya French, The Secret Place. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, I think that would be a, a good one to recommend for this. Have I, you read that? I started it and I haven't <laughs> finished it yet, but I'm, I can't even say I'm halfway through it because I'm not. I'm, I'm really closer to the beginning, but it's starting off. It's, it's is, that, is that one of the ones that you had to pick up and then put back and maybe pick it up again later no no no. I actually I have it it's just I have it bookmarked it just takes me a while to get through books because again three kids I don't have a lot of spare time <laughs> um, the woman in cabin 10 um, also okay. a good mystery um, Ooh, I just checked out one um, that's actually a YA book that you might, might like mm-hmm. uh, is one of us is lying by Karen M McManus mm-hmm. um, that is it's a young adult mystery uh, but it's very... Is it contemporary? Yes. Okay. I believe so. Uh, what's happening, Who? who's responsible, mm-hmm. um, with a very unreliable narrator. Um, and then, let's see, I've also heard really good things about The Dark Lake by Sarah Bailey. Um, so for a good mystery, I would recommend that one as well. Um, 
or The Broken Girls, um, Simon St. James, Simone St. James maybe? Simone St. James, I'm sorry. If you're an author and I mispronounce <laughs> your name, you have my utmost apologies. Please feel free to email me and tell me the correct pronunciation or just come on down to Tampa and visit the library and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. Um, we love hosting authors, uh, but I, I will just give you my sincere apology because it happens a lot. I, I, don't, mm -hmm. I like to make up my own pronunciation. I think it's fun. No one knows what I'm talking about, but you know. You're very creative like that, yes. I'm gonna put that in my memoir. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a couple of mystery titles there for, um, for that comment. And then I think we're actually kind of running out of time. Um, so we will wrap up. Uh, just to a reminder to everyone, we are gonna be doing this next Wednesday as well, mm -hmm. um, which is September something. Uh, we'll be here at uh, 12 noon again. Do you know the date for next Wednesday? Mm -hmm. It's next Wednesday, we'll be here again, and the Wednesday after that. So we're doing it every Wednesday in September. Uh, we'll be doing Facebook Live Reader's Advisory, uh, recommending books for you, um, and just talking about what we've been reading and um, you know having a good time. Um, so join us for that, and make sure that you get your library card. If you have not, it's free, and it gives you access to tons of great resources. Books, movies, music, audiobooks. We have it all at the library. You can check out everything we've just been talking about, except there are holds on some of it. but. Um, so yeah, so I just want to thank everybody for tuning in and next Wednesday at noon. We'll see you then.